London Bridge is burning down, burning down, burning down. London Bridge is burning down, my fair Satoshi. What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of Attack once again, and today we're going to be taking a look at what appears to be a successful hard fork over to London. This is the one that included the infamous change EIP 1559 that has added in the burning of a portion of the Ethereum fees. And we have a few questions to go over. I'm going to ask them and answer them right now before our sponsorship in case you just want to know. So first of all, are fees being burned? Yes. Has this caused Ethereum to go deflationary? No. Has this reduced fees on the network? No. Has this reduced mining rewards? Yes. All right, here's a word from our sponsor and we'll get into more right after it. Today's sponsor is myself. To support the channel, click the join button below the video and you will get access to our privately hosted Rocket Chat. Selecting the 199 option will get you access and after that you need to head over to the membership tab, scroll down and expand out your membership perks. Find the section for connecting on social media. And in that section, there will be a secret registration URL to join Rocket Chat, where you can sign up to enjoy talking with other cryptocurrency enthusiasts and miners without spammers, scammers, or bots. Welcome back. So let me show you guys a couple tools that you can go ahead and take a look at to monitor, of course, the burn rate. And that will be over here on etherchain.org forward slash burn. And as you can see, there's a handy dandy chart that is updating in real time showing the amount of burned Ethereum. Currently it's at 861 ETH, ETH. And if we refresh here, we can see that we are on block 12,965,971. So we are 971 blocks into, of course, this particular hard fork. If we wanted to calculate and see if ETH was going deflationary, that would essentially mean that we would be burning more ETH than would be being minted. And as we know, every block to ETH are currently minted. So if we open up a calculator here, let me get one, and we just take the 971 and multiply that times two, that would be 1,942 ETH minted post London hard fork with 865.7 ETH being burned. So 875 minus 875.7 equals 1,066.3 ETH that has been minted and new to the network. So that answers the first question. Is ETH deflationary now? No, it is not. So if that was a worry or an expectation, well, you know, you don't have to worry about it anymore. So let's talk about, of course, the, the mining rewards and get into that. And if you take a look here, uh, the current mining rewards is about per 100 mega hash a second on Hivon.net, $6.54. And that has gone down from about $10 per 100 mega hash. So as I can tell right now, as it sits, right, this can change just depending on multiple factors. There has been a reduction in mining rewards by about 30%. So it's on that upper end of reduction, uh, even compensating for uh, or with MEV, which is, of course, the maximal or minor extracted value. So we did see a hit as far as mining profits go. Does that actually make Ethereum less profitable than other coins on the network? If we took a look at what to mine, the answer based on the defaults of three RX 480s would be no. Ethereum is still more profitable, of course, than anything else. So we are looking at $7.11 a day in revenue as compared to Ravencoin, which is the next closest at $4.86 a day. Now, of course, Taking a look at cards that typically do have other options, like the RTX 2080 Ti, for example, here on Miner Stat, it still appears that Ethereum is more profitable. But I'm not positive 
that miner stat is updated uh, or what to mine at this point. So there's some more calculations that need to be done here. And if we took a look though, that would be about 90 mega hash a second saying about $7 and 11 cents. And if we look at Hive on pool, which we know has updated to the latest clients, it's looking about right, right? So the what to mine I think is updated at this point. If it's not, let me know in the comment section below. But as far as I can tell right now, it looks like we are pretty much on pace as far as like being able to track and see if anything else becomes more profitable for the miners. Now, if we take a look at the Ethereum price, let's go ahead and refresh. We have gone up today, of course, to 2771. It did break 2800 there. It was trying to test 3000 and it did not quite make it. Now, the assumption was that if this was successful and if, of course, it went deflationary, which it did not, that the price of Ethereum would shoot up even higher. Seeing that it hasn't really gone deflationary and what we've done essentially is cut new supply in half is pretty much what's happened here. A little less than half, but somewhere around there, you should see in theory, you know, a modest increase in the price of Ethereum. Good notes, of course, right now is that Ethereum still is the most profitable coin to mine for GPU miners. And then it was successful and there doesn't seem to be a ton of issues going on right now. I did take a look at the upgrades and it looks like there's still about 30% of the clients that haven't updated to the latest client versions like we talked about in the previous video. That being said, there can be of course dead client services that are not in use anymore and so on. We're just gonna have to monitor and see what's happening. It does look like of course if we take a look at the gas prices, which is the final question that we had here. And let's take a look at basically the last two days. On August 4th, you were sitting at about 26 guay, somewhere between there. And then when we shot, and then we shot up right before, of course, the fork to about 54 in gas fees. And then now on the 5th, if we rock down to the fifth, it's sitting around anywhere from 30 with a sharp incline up into the 70s and 60s right now. So this isn't necessarily indicative of gas fees going up due to London because we have to keep in mind that the amount of transactions going on has gone up. So as with anything that's been new and upgraded, people like to try it out. And that's what's happening here. And just like before, the more transactions that are on the network, of course, the more gas fees there will be. So it's really hard to make a definitive, basically, determination of whether or not this helped gas fees. But as predicted, it appears that it has not. Meaning that, yes, it, it should, in theory, be more predictable at this point but it isn't decreasing, of course, the gas cost. So if that was your expectation, unfortunately, that's not what's happening here. You are going to want to be looking at layer two and side chain solutions, things like Polygon Matic, or of course the, I don't know, the plethora of other layer two solutions, Optimism, for example, and Arbitrum. So. Those are a couple other layer two options. What we do have coming up this week is Ethermine has completed their upgrade. So we will be going over payout options to Polygon Matic. They don't have the options for layer twos for Optimism yet or Arbitrum. So when those come, we'll have to do updated videos as well. And we'll review, you know, gas prices and stuff eventually this week on the rest of the pools. So as of right now, it does look like that the Hive on pool, for example, is still 0% fees and isn't making miners pay fees on payout. So that's something to keep in mind. While on Ethermine, you know, if you're going to be being paid out to mainnet, we do have that problem of basically miners paying the fees. And that'll really be up to you on which pools you want to pick. 
I'm still not completely confident that other pools won't follow suit coming up here soon as they see what kind of impact EIP 1559 is having on the pool software and that sort of thing, right? So if there ends up being a case where the pools are basically burning too much trying to send out and they're having issues with keeping enough ETH in their wallet as a buffer, we could see them basically follow suit with Ethermine and start charging miners on mainnet to get paid out. It's really up in the air right now. We'll keep an eye on it. So look forward, of course, to this week and the payouts for Ethermine being covered now that those changes have been implemented. And then I do have a very exciting gift from Vosk Coin and Gold Shell, which is their mini Doge miner. And we will be trying to get that unboxed and tested as well. That being said, I am behind, really far behind. We did get a, get a notification that I will be moving the farm hopefully tomorrow. And because of that, obviously, the amount of video content will be short. I will be trying to basically get out vlogs for you guys. And just stay tuned for that because I'm not sure exactly when these videos will be coming out. I'm going to try to get the ether mine done as for you guys as soon as possible because I know that's important to a lot of people. But as far as the gold shell miner and traditional content throughout the rest of the week, most of that's probably going to be shifted over to vlogs about moving the mining farm and then starting back up once that has gotten all sorted and we have it all kind of at least running. Um, reliably then we will move on to reviewing more hardware we also have some yubi keys as well as trezor just reached out via an email which i got a reply to i think we have a couple trezor options coming up here for you guys videos as well as giveaways so be sure to hit the like comment subscribe if you're interested in any of that and i will see you next tuesday if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to see more. Also, you can check out this playlist for more content talking about cryptocurrency.